Is the FBI collecting our information from above? Facebook announces the ability to use OpenPGP for their email and couponing fraud on the dark web. All that and more coming up on ThreatWire. I'm Shannon Morrison. This is ThreatWire for June 3rd, 2015. Your summary of what's threatening our security, privacy, and internet freedom. And thank you for supporting us. We've been doing this show for one month so far for the relaunch, and we couldn't be more happier <laughs> that you're joining us. So let's go ahead and get started with the first story. Now, if you've seen some odd Cessna planes flying overhead in long circular patterns, it's possible that they are being used by the FBI for surveillance. In an article posted by The Guardian yesterday, at least 100 and 15 planes, including several small Cessnas, are being operated by the FBI under fake company names with video and sometimes cell phone surveillance technology. Now, according to spokesman Christopher Allen, quote, the FBI's aviation program is not secret. Specific aircraft and their capabilities are protected for operational security purposes. The FBI's planes are not equipped, designed, or used for bulk collection activities or mass surveillance. Now, the fake company names are used to protect the flight operational security, that makes sense, and the FAA knows about it as well. While reported to not be used for mass surveillance, their aviation technology can be used for that exact reason and undisclosed to the public. But this information raises the concern that aerial surveillance is just recently starting to come to light. While it could be used to counter terrorism and criminal activity, definitely, it could also be used as a breach to our civil liberties and become intrusive on collection of our sensitive data. It's kind of 1984 bunch? Yeah, I think so. Facebook is back in the news this week with their new secure email communications rollout. Facebook announced the ability for users to add their OpenPGP public keys to their profiles on Monday, allowing end-to-end -end encryption of any notification emails from Facebook, which would also include password reset emails and new login notifications. To add your own OpenPGP public key, all you have to do is go over to Contact and Basic Info, where you change your email, your phone, address, and stuff and stuff, and then choose Add a Public Key. The Facebook article we showed and we also link below gives how to set up PGP for your own identity as well as what it is. So PGP, aka pretty good privacy, basically lets you encrypt and decrypt data with better assurance that your subject matter wasn't read by a third party. I highly recommend a service called Keybase.io, which is very consumer oriented. It's very easy to encrypt and decrypt your PGP messages. And if you need help, we also did a segment all about PGP on Hack5. Now, as a couponer, this story is rather important to me. The FBI indicted Bjorgard Wadigny of Louisiana on Thursday with charges of wire fraud and trademark counterfeiting. He was accused of being the dark web user known as the Purple Lotus and selling batches of counterfeit coupons for 25 bucks a pop. The coupons could then be used to buy hundreds of dollars worth of brand name items for free. And he could have done $1 million in damages to the brands in question total. Now, couponing can be used for lots of savings and counterfeits over time do detract from the amount that brands are willing to discount on said coupons. As a couponer, you also run the risk of downloading something nefarious by purchasing from an unauthorized person or having the FBI knock on your door by using said fakes at a store. Now, while fraud of this type isn't new, it has become prevalent with the growth of printable coupon use. And it is a very sad reminder for us to use caution when trying to save a buck or two. Lastly, our featured comment today comes from NotMan05, who in response to the TSA failing several security tests, wrote, the TSA just provides a false sense of security to the simple-minded. They are post-active. Nothing they do is to avert new methods of terrorism. They only focus on previous methods, and they don't even do that well. They waste our money on machines that have been proven to be easily tricked, and they manage to continue hiring perverts who use their position as an opportunity to grope and abuse people. Not all do this, but there have been many cases to prove my point. Don't get me wrong, we need checkpoints, but they need to employ better, more efficient methods that don't continue to violate our rights just so we can fly to our destinations. <sighs> I could go on and on for hours with a really long discussion about my own personal feelings towards the TSA, but I won't here. Alas, I feel you on that. But I will say that it is really funny to watch a whole slew of hackers after an InfoSec security conference going through security at the same time and all of them asking for pat-downs as opposed to going through those creepy scanners, even if they just show outlines. They see us trolling. They hatin'. 
Thanks for the comment, NotMan05. And of course, if you have any thoughts on today's stories, you can leave them below. Before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the show so far on Patreon. If you find value from this and you want to donate, say, a dollar per month, that's about eight cents per episode of ThreatWire. Please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash ThreatWire. And we may even feature your adorable fur babies like these ones in our next, next episode. Now, I'm kind of a big cat person, so I just love your cat pictures please send them in. But your dogs are really, really cute too. And you can send in like bunnies and stuff as well. <laughs> We're still hoping to reach our three times a week milestone goal with a rotation of Patrick Norton, Darren Kitchen, and myself. So while we're not there yet, we will continue to do the show as often as possible because this news is so important to us and it's important to you as well. I hope you'll continue to keep this show coming completely independent and ad free. And if you can't donate, a like, a share, and a subscribe goes a really long way too. And you can find all of our episodes, links to our social networks, all that stuff over at ThreatWire .net. With that, I'm Shannon Morse. I'll see you on the internet.